Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well because today we're talking about music and we're looking at some thrift store finds. I mean, we're not even uh, halfway through the month and I already have this big stack going. So I was considering kind of holding off doing an end of the month thing, but uh, just uh, before I put stuff away, kind of cataloged and, and into the, the stacks in the collection, I usually like to keep it separate so I can do these videos. Uh, that was just getting unreasonable. I had a, a giant stack on my turntable and I want to use it again. Um, so I'm going to go through these finds I've got. These were all found at a thrift store very recently, two two or three thrift stores. They're all, you know, 50 cents or a dollar. Uh, and I'm pumped. Like these are all great finds and I'm happy to have them. So we're going to get started with a few tapes. This is, I was really happy to find this one. This is 50 cents uh, along with the next tape that we'll cover. This is Point of No Return by Kansas. Kirshner Records there, Got the side label. This is of Kansas's kind of classic period. Uh, this is my favorite one. It's probably the most uh, prog rocky that they've got. It's a little less hard rock driven um, than say um, Left Overture. Um, it doesn't have kind of, you know, uh, some of the, the blazing guitar work that maybe their other albums have, but I really, really like that one. Um, especially, I mean, the title track, Point of No Return, um, uh, Nobody's Home. The spider, I really like kind of the spider as an interlude. I think that's great. Spider into Paradox is really fun. Uh, so 50 cents for my favorite Kansas album, Can't Go Wrong. And that was paired with uh, In Search of the Lost Chord by the Moody Blues. Show the side in the back there. I like this, uh, I'll show it off that yellow. Yellow tape is pretty cool. Um, Again, a band I'm kind of familiar with. I have a few albums here and there plunking away at it, but uh, really cool to see that one. I know this is an incredibly iconic album, so I'm happy to, to have a physical copy of that. And I tested them all both briefly. They both uh, work fine, sound great, so that's awesome. All right, the next is a big old stack of CDs. Some of these are 50 cents, some are a dollar. Um, one thing I'm, I'm amassing a small collection of movie soundtracks for a few reasons. One, I have a you know a variety of show ideas around movie soundtracks that I want to do, but also I've noticed on streaming sites and online, it's really hard to actually find these. You can find playlists that people have made of these songs put together, but very rarely if you go on Spotify, for example, to find uh, the actual album itself will be totally complete. Quite often you'll have songs missing. So I think that's another, you know, good aspect to collecting physical media. So this one, uh, my fiance found this uh, and was like, you need to get this one. It's the soundtrack to the movie, Basketball. Uh, now I haven't watched this movie in a long time. I rewatched the trailer recently. Uh, I mean, it's uh, written by uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park. Uh, it came out, what, 98 was when this movie came out? Yeah, 98. Uh, and it reads exactly like that. Uh, watching the trailer, you get all the types of humor, types of jokes. Um, but I mean, musically, so I'm into, you know, pop punk and, and ska punk and that kind of stuff. So on it, you have, you know, Real Big Fish covering uh, AHA's Take On Me that, you know, becomes a staple of theirs, as well as their big hit, Beer. Um, you've also got stuff from Super Suckers, Deep Blue Something, uh, you have Cherry Pop and Daddies doing a cover of uh, Harry Belafonte's Jump in the Line. Um, it's nowhere near as good as the original, but it's still fun. You have a track from Goldfinger, who I've talked about before. You also have Smash Mouth doing a cover of Why Can't We Be Friends. So, I mean, it's, it's a soundtrack that's incredibly of its time. I think to really appreciate the movie, certainly, but the soundtrack, you kind of need to be, you know, within a certain age range. Um, but this is a movie that we can all agree is terrible. Godzilla from, I think, 98 as well, or 99 is when this movie came out. But the soundtrack, like, the, we can all agree as a movie, not good. But as a soundtrack, again, uh, it's, an, it's an awesome soundtrack, super of its time as well. You've got, you open with the Wallflowers doing a cover of David Bowie's Heroes. Like, that's awesome. Then you've got, you know, Jamiroquai with the track doing Deeper Underground, and it starts with that iconic uh, Godzilla cry. That's fun. Rage Against the Machine. It was, are you doing a late 90s action movie if you don't have Rage Against the Machine? I mean, there you go. You also got, you know, Foo Fighters, Green Day, Brain Stew, the Godzilla remix. Haven't listened to that yet, so I'm not exactly sure what the Godzilla remix entails. Um, and then you close off actually with David Arnold, who's doing the, the compositional work. So it's 
not the full score, but you get the soundtrack and then you end with the opening titles and looking for clues. So you get a bit of that composition in there. Oh, Silver Chair, yeah, Untitled by Silver Chair. Great soundtrack, great soundtrack. I like it a lot. Uh, the next, I was really pumped. These were all, um, when I was putting these into Discogs to get ready to put away, I found these are all um, uh, like buyer club versions of these albums. So I'm really happy uh, to have these. And these are albums, some of which I've had before, but have since passed on. Um, that sounded dark. Some of these albums I've had before, but I've passed them along at some point, uh, either because I upgraded to a vinyl copy or, or what have you. So we'll start with Rush's Test for Echo. I think my favorite of their kind of 90s, you know, heavy alt rock period. Um, I really like the artwork. This one has a really cool booklet as well. This is not the Rush remaster. Another of any of these uh, spoiler Rush albums that I've got, um, but Test for Echo is really good. I like that one a lot. Uh, and then this is actually my favorite. So Tess Recco is probably my favorite of their 90s alt rock period. This is my favorite of their sort of 80s synth period, which is Grace Under Pressure. I think people often overlook this one just because, you know, maybe it doesn't hit quite as hard. You're missing some of that guitar work. But there are some really great tracks on here. Uh, I really like Red Sector A, The Enemy Within. Kids Gloves is really lots of good songs on here. Love it, love it, love it. And then this one, uh, I actually don't like quite as much as Grace Under Pressure, uh, but is the probably the more iconic one from this period is Signals. You've got, you know, uh, Subdivisions is the big hit from it, but you also have like Losing It, that's a really well-known one. People like it. The Analog Kid, I think Analog Kid is the one I like more on there. Um, so that's great. Three great Rush albums. Happy to have those physically now. The next uh, couple ones are all kind of ska punk or pop punk related. We have Kisby Nights, but as recorded by Streetlight Manifesto. So we used to have a band called Catch 22. I mean, they're still around. They put out a very iconic ska punk album called Kisby Nights. Um, and the lead singer went on to form uh, Streetlight Manifesto, who uh, outside of the RX Bandit, so probably the closest the genre is going to get to including progressive elements. Um, there's just a lot of really intricate instrumentation and a lot of genre bending in what they do. Um, but not quite as much on this album, because this is more of a re-recording of that classic album. So there is the inclusion of a lot of what makes Streetlight Manifest a really great and unique band. But this is more straight ahead, but this is still really iconic. Uh, Dear Sergio, the title track, Gives Me Nights. Um, Ride in the Fourth Wave, uh, Nine Millimeter in a Three-Piece Suit. I think that's my favorite track on here. So good album, great album to have. Uh, the Pie Tasters, Willis, a really fun album. This is uh, a little bit of a beat up coffee, copy. I need more coffee. A little worse for wear, but it's got this great track on it, Out All Night. That's one of my favorite Pie Tasters tracks. So again, uh, not so much punk, more like ska, rock, kind of more two-tone inspired. Um, if you want to check out a track by them, do um, Out All Night. That's a really good one from this album. And the next, a band I was never super into, but they're uh, iconic. And I feel like maybe I need to have some of their stuff. I already have one of their iconic albums. This is the other one that I didn't have. Uh, Blink-182's Enema of the State, and the, uh, one of these bands where they put the artwork this way. Uh, so this is kind of the album where they, you know, hit it big, made it big. You have, you know, all the small things, what's my age again, um, which when you listen to this album, those are okay tracks, but uh, the whole, the rest of the album, I think is quite strong. I was giving this a listen the other day. All right, next up, we have three more albums. Let's do, uh, let's do this one. Let's break, break genres. This is a CD single from a band that I think needs more love, Ocean Color Scene. If you're into Brit rock, if you want to hear, you know, a modern take on, uh, I'm not going to say they're the Beatles, but uh, although I'll talk about what's on here, but if you want to hear, you know, if you're into what that Oasis sound, that Brit rock sound, check this out. This is a, a CD single for The Circle which is from one of their albums, uh, Mosley Shoals, I think. So you have an acoustic version of that. Then you get two B-sides, Chelsea Walk and Alibis. And then a live version, can't really, it's not gonna focus, a live version of the Beatles, Day Tripper, uh, featuring, featuring, I believe, uh, Liam Gallagher. Uh, I don't think the whole, both brothers are on here. I think Liam Gallagher is on their version of Day Tripper here. So pretty cool. Um, I really like them. I only had that one album of theirs in the past and I found this for 50 cents. Yeah, well, I'm not going to pass it up. 
Uh, next up, I was having a dance party the past couple of weeks having listened to this. This is a great compilation from Daptone Records. This is Daptone Gold. I mean, uh, Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, uh, you know, uh, more Sharon Jones, the Dap Kings, Sugar Man, um, uh, Binky, Binky Griptite, uh, so many, the Budos Band, so many Dap Tone stalwarts on here. And this compilation is long. It's like 78 minutes. Uh, and it's a dance party from start to finish. If you want to hear easily the best R&B, easily the best soul, easily the best funk being made today, check out Daptone Records. Check out this compilation, Daptone Gold. You're not going to be upset. And I think I found this for a dollar. Uh, Value Village, it was, it was, I was pumped. And then we're going to end it off with another, this was a 50 cent find, I believe. This is uh, also a compilation not available on Spotify. I There's people trying to put YouTube playlists together, but even then some of those videos disappear. Some of those tracks are different versions. Um, I remember back in the day, I actually had you know a downloaded version of this. So it's kind of nice again to be kind of justified in like, well, there's a good reason to have physical copies. And this is, uh, I believe it's called, yeah, Look at All the Love We Found, A Tribute to Sublime. Uh, so the title's on the side there, but just says Tribute to Sublime. Show off the track listing. And these are all really fun versions of uh, Sublime tracks. So Sublime, again, one of those very iconic Scotland bands, uh, had a very distinct sound that would get copied ad nauseum forever and forever. Um, but they're the originals and they get to get away with that kind of vibe and style. But you got really cool stuff on here. I really like it opens with uh, Jack Johnson doing a cover of Bad Fish in Boss DJ. Really nice acoustic mellow opening. Um, some other highlights, Fishbone has a version of uh, Date Rape on here. Fishbone, a super great band and they do, they do the song justice. I think I like their version on here more than the original. Um, no Doubt has a pretty cool cover of DJs. Um, Avail does a really good Santeria, I like that one. G Love has a really good greatest hits. So I like that one. Um, Pennywise, same in the end. Uh, one of the highlights for me is Ozzo Matley doing their version of April 29th, 1992. Really good highlight. So again, I wanted to wait till the end of the month, but we're not even halfway there. And I, I struck I struck gold. Uh, just so many great finds, different genres, all kinds of cool stuff. And those tapes, I'm pumped to have my favorite Kansas album on tape. Uh, I have that one on CD as well, but just to get on tape is dope. So yeah, those are my finds. Uh, how's your February going? Hope it's going well because mine's going pretty good. Catch you next time. Bye.